All right, everybody, this is another special international edition of Address the Sass. Of course, we're not excluding people who are domestic. We're just trying to be a little bit more welcoming, given the time of day, to the people that live in other parts of the world. Uh, you may also we have, notice we have one other difference. Zach Miner is joining us, super producer of Red 3 Games. Zach Miner. Hey, Nick everyone. Is, uh, Nick's actually at Google, isn't he? I think so, or yeah, some, right. some Google-owned company. Some, some Google, may, maybe he's just going there to search for things because that's kind of what made that company. I have no idea. Anyway, Zach is here. It is all good. Um, there should be much to talk about. Obviously, we've gone through all the launches of the new consoles here in the United States. Maybe we'll hear some thoughts and feelings about how it launched out there in other countries. Like, um, I saw a story about a guy who paid an insane sum of money for, uh, I think it was an Xbox One in Brazil. Did, did you catch that, Zach? I, th I think it was a PS4, because the PS4 was, was the one that was cost a crazy amount in Brazil. It's just, yeah, that's that, someone needs to get that economy under control, because I think they have both the Olympics and the World Cup <laughs> very, yeah. very, very soon. Well, I think um, it costs that much there, because none of it is being produced in Brazil. Right, um, yeah, very, very high tariffs, but also there, I, uh, I think it's the Real, that their currency has gone absolutely haywire, and like I, I believe pizzas cost something like $35. I don't think that's for the good pizza. I think it's for the pizza pizza. <laughs> that's why Max Payne was drunk all the time. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. <laughs> all right. Well, um, it looks like we brought some people in. Do you want to grab them? Don't yeah. Them there, uh, let's see. Uh, let's put uh, David on just a second here. All right, David, you are on. David, how are you doing? Unmute yourself, David. Unmute, uh, sir. Hi. Hello. Hey, how are you doing? Fine. That is a th that is a fun abode that you seem to be in. A fun? I'm, seeing, oh, okay. I'm, I'm seeing the ponies. I'm seeing yes. something green. And I'm seeing what's his face from uh, oh. SpongeBob behind you as well. Oh, it's it's uh, a Cthulhu oh. hand puppet. Bravo, bravo. <laughs> I am uh, as 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 a kid, I read much H.P. Lovecraft, and I love Cthulhu like you cannot believe. Anyway, David, <laughs> where are you from? I'm from Mexico. Mexico, cool. Well, thank you very much for joining us. Um, I guess I want to just sort of ask you for a second, yeah. um, what was kind of the, the interest, the availability of new consoles in Mexico? Hmm, well, like, the, the most popular one was uh, Xbox One, because mm -hmm. Microsoft had a very big uh, marketing push, but uh, PS4, like, it was, like, the same for both consoles. Even though yeah. we got the PS4 like two weeks later than in than in the United States, okay. But but it was like it it was also like it because it was cheaper. A lot of people just bought the PS4. Now, can you walk into a store right now and buy either an Xbox One or a PS4? Or is it sold out like it is most other places? Some stores, if you're lucky, it's not like oh you're not going to find one until like two months, but. Uh, it it is it is it is possible to find to find to find one if you if you go if you go to stores that aren't aren't like specialized in video games you mm. might find one so got it got it so um I I I, I guess what, what, one other question I've been very aware of just how popular Gears of War was in Mexico mm -hmm. oh, uh, yeah. given the the sense that we may not be seeing more from that franchise uh, where do you think kind of like will become the next popular gaming franchise in Mexico. Well, the the most popular gaming franchise, I think, is uh, FIFA. Well, okay, FIFA is just kind of a given if it is in the United yeah. States of America. <laughs> so, other than FIFA, <laughs> uh, other than FIFA, I, I don't I don't know. Like like the 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 common the common multiplayer games like Call of Duty and and Battlefield are are very popular here. But but uh, I don't know, like. A lot, a lot of of these get news, these free to play uh, MOBA games are very, very, very popular here. So, I'm, 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 I'm curious. Um, how is the internet, especially outside of the major cities like like Mexico City, like like mm -hmm. Tijuana? Um, I mean, is is, is it is, is it consistent enough throughout the country that you can have the popularity of multiplayer games? Uh, no. Well. Uh, aside from like like several like uh, major urban centers, like like it, it doesn't, it's not like that great of of, uh, of service. 
So you're saying like the infrastructure really doesn't cover the entire country, just the very big population centers. Yeah, well, there's infrastructure, but not very good infrastructure, so. Mm -hmm. so anyway, I've, 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 I've been asking you a bunch of questions. I, I should, I'm not being impolite. David, did you have a question? <laughs> oh, well, well, I, I've been, uh, well, I, I've been me meaning to ask, like, uh, Jap Japanese uh, de development, like, they're, like, s seem to be, like, mm, way behind the curve from everybody else. Like the 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 PS4 like next gen la, uh, lineup from Japan was like non-existent. Like, I, like it it seems like like are are they are willing to to uh, are aren't they willing to to adapt try to be and, yeah. to adapt and be uh, and and try to work try to learn from other developers or are are they just too stubborn to to work on their own ways. It, it's interesting. I think it's a mixture because we're hearing this complaint coming from some Japanese developers. Hideo Kojima and Zach, correct me if I'm wrong, I think also Keiji Inafune has, oh, yeah. has, has, has made similar comments. And I, I think it's a mixture of two different problems because the Japanese game market has changed dramatically and the traditional game market, the console game market, has shrank considerably. Um, everything has really moved over to mobile, uh, you know, you know and, and, and primarily on phones. Yeah, I, I think it was probably maybe even eight years ago when I used to go to the Tokyo Game Show. Suddenly, we went on the floor, and yeah, you could see a Sony booth and you could see a Koei booth, but you really saw mainly booths that had phone games. And this is back when cell phones really weren't a very good platform <laughs> for video games. There, there was a Kingdom Hearts game. You, you, you'd you be playing it on a screen that was like, like that. But there was a lot of interest. There seemed to be a really, really big market. So you're seeing a lot of the financing move in a different direction. And additionally, I think there, there, there is a cultural issue where it has been going on for so long. There was so much success doing it a particular way with a lot of Japanese developers that it is challenging to try to sort of turn that thing around. But when you do see people like Kojima himself, Who's obviously right there at the cream of the crop? Oh yeah, you know, making those statements that hopefully will have some kind of cultural effect. That there needs to be some adaption of how Western game design has moved a, a, a little bit forward. Because that, 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 what, what's so frustrating is that there's such good ideas in Japanese uh, games, oh, yeah. and then the execution kind of gets in the way of your ability to appreciate that. Oh yeah, well, uh, I definitely like, like supported like Keiji Nafune's Kickstarter for Mighty Number no. Nine, so. I, yeah. I'm really excited for that, and and I'm glad that the the goal for PS4 uh, and Xbox One uh, editions for for the game like got covered because like even even that like that development team I think Integrates the one that mm -hmm. makes Mega Man they weren't like very sure to do like a PS4 or a or a Xbox One version they were like content to do like a, like a, a, P, a PS3 and an and Xbox mm -hmm. 360 one. So, well, so, also, I mean, that's where all the consoles are right now. So, if you want to yeah. see a return, <laughs> you want to do it that yeah, way. But, yeah, but Mighty Number no. Nine is coming out until 2015. So that's true. So, hmm. It, 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 should, it should be. Hopefully, they will figure out easy ways of conversion so that as many consoles as possible will be able to support that game. I think the other game that really could be. I don't want to say game changer. One that could be very significant mm -hmm. will be uh, hopefully this year the launch of Final Fantasy XV because oh, they yeah, are yeah. you know you know because the combat is not the traditional Final Fantasy combat. It's probably gonna be a lot more accessible. That could bring in an audience to such a venerable franchise that I think has been sort of standing on the on on, on the sidelines because of its strict adherence to that very traditional turn based or turn based ish form of combat. Oh so. yeah, JRPGs have been like very like uh, not. Like this generation, like, like taken like a backseat. Yeah, yeah, they they, they definitely have. Uh, one of my most favorite things is when uh, my 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 good colleague Rob Manuel, when I was working on X Play, was doing the review of Final Fantasy Thirteen, and he gave me the review. You know, prior to to publishing it, I said this is the one and only time that you can say the game gets really good after the first forty hours. Oh. <laughs> it was one of the most shocking sentences I have ever read in my entire life. Hey, David, you stay there. We'll, we'll, we'll keep your mic open. But Zach, do you want to bring somebody in? Yeah. 
Yeah, let's uh, let's see. Let's let's bring in James here. James, unmute your mic. Are you there, James? James? Unmute yourself there. Up at the top. There we go. Got it. There we go. There we go. Yeah. All right, cool. so, so, All right, so my my question is for Battlefield Four. It's been a lot of problems with that launch. I mean, uh, yeah, <laughs> I feel like it should have been delayed. Um, you know, it, it, it's one of those. The, the, the problems are definitely on the server side. As someone who played the game, obviously on beta servers, um, it, it, it performed fine and I quite enjoyed it. So the only thing that I can say that has transitioned is obviously now you're on the public servers and everyone is trying to play it. It's, you know, it's one of those things where there, there has to be better research and understanding of what happens at launch because it, 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 it's hard to say that these are surprises anymore. This happens so many times. Obviously, EA got just blindsided with what happened with SimCity. So it was probably most surprising that that game of all games, you know, this premier game coming from Electronic Arts, would just suddenly just, you know, just, just really take a big dump. Um, yeah. Or, or, or have, have you been trying to get on? I've just given up in the past I've been like, two weeks. pretty much constantly since launch. I mean, if you stick to the smaller game modes, it's a lot of fun still. Like, Obliteration has been starting to work really well recently. Which that's is good. Fun. Obliteration but, on... I'm, I'm trying to remember what the map is that's the prison. Uh, Operation Locker. Yes, I love that one. I just absolutely love that map. <laughs> you know what, I, I called that map. That is probably the best Call of Duty map I've ever played. <laughs> yeah. But the thing is, like, I'm on PS4, and mm. I'm loving it, by the way, but the... Uh, China Rising update was supposed to come out yesterday, and it did yes. finally come out, but it came out at, like, 10.30 at night. Well, uh, I mean, look, caution coming from Electronic Arts with regard to Battlefield is about as... It's, it's not terribly surprising. Now, were, were you able to play it? Have you tried to play it? Yeah, I was playing I, a little bit this morning, but I just stopped. Now, has, ha, have you seen any improvements to the performance of the game with no, the China the, Rising pack? The actual patch didn't get released with the map pack. They delayed the actual patch, so we didn't get any updates or anything. We just got new bugs. Well, that's good. At least there's something new to talk about with your friends. Um, I, I, I guess the one thing I'm interested in is that you still want to keep on trying to play it, that this hasn't pushed you so far away. You're like, I give up. I'm going to go play. It's because I'm still having fun. Like I'm not able to play Conquest or anything, but the mm -hmm. fun is still there. It's just on I a different game mode. All right. Well, see, that's that's. That, I, I, don't know, I I find that kind of inspiring that you're willing to endure uh, because obviously I look at my Twitter feed, I look at comments, and all it is is just kind of this 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 guttural roar of frustration, fury, and anger. So uh, it's nice to see you, James. I see trying to make it go of it. So. Yeah. I mean, I, I only have two games on the PS4. It's Rivals and Battlefield, and, right, I've and, Rivals, and Rivals is performing. Yeah, it's good, but I just suck at it. Well, no, what I'm saying is, is that somehow the online performance of Rivals, yet another EA game, is functioning, and, and Battlefield is just, you know, Battlefield probably is the more popular game, and so the servers are getting hit a lot more, but nonetheless, it just, the, the whole thing is quite kind but of On, on Rivals, the server sizes are only six players. Battlefield is 64. Yeah. And it's, but that was their selling point. They've done it on PC. I just, I don't, <laughs> it's OEA. You know, one of these days, I'm really looking forward to 2014, where I might be able to, do, you know, engage in some conversation that is positive about electronic arts. I mean, it just, you know, yay, wouldn't that be nice? Huh. Yeah. Zach, do you think that's even possible? Nope. Nope. <laughs> you heard it here. We probably will not be able to say things that are positive about electronic arts in 2014. Zach, is there anything happening there in chat? I assume Battlefield 4 is probably something everyone has a strong opinion about. Oh, yeah. Uh, also, uh, just as kind of a follow-up to the conversation with David, um, I don't know if you guys saw, but last week, uh, Lightning Returns Final Fantasy XIII debuted in Japan to oh, the yeah. lowest Final Fantasy sales ever. It debuted with just under 300,000 copies sold. Uh, now, I, I believe it was also still, even despite that, the top-selling game in Japan. Yeah. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, so, 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 so right there, David, that's the illustration. You can be the top-selling game and move those few copies. Um, they oh. also, Square needs to kind of get off this Final Fantasy XIII jag. <laughs> so. I, really, I really like Final Fantasy XIII and XIII too, and I'm, real, and, and I'm really excited for Lightning Returns, so. No, it's, it's probably going to sell better outside of Japan. I mean, that's, that's just how different things have become 
with with gaming culture over there. It, it, it really is not. It's, it's yeah. not Japan I once knew. And I've been playing Final Fantasy XIV, the uh, Realm Reborn, and, and I love it. It's it's a, a really good MMO. Like okay. I play World, of, I play World of Warcraft, uh, and, and this game, and th this game is like they th like they really like like woke up and said, oh, we're screwing things up. So. Well, and there you have it. Maybe finally, it took that many times to do a successful MMO with with Final Fantasy, and they noticed there's this game World of Warcraft. So well, yeah, yeah, swear. It's, it's, <laughs> way to go. <laughs> um, we we've got a question from the chat here that uh, that is perfect for that. Um, this is from Don Fahey. Uh, he's asking, "What's wrong with the MMO genre?" Uh, we had WoW followed by nine years of mediocre, to okay to briefly successful to you know free to play, um, and now we have games like Destiny that are going in a different direction. Um, but what does this mean for the traditional MMO? Um, where do you see that going, Adam? I mean, I, I think you might agree. The traditional MMO can't go many directions. I mean, because you know, that, that, that word traditional kind of really defines it. World of Warcraft was the perfection of a particular model, and you know, everything, even when there's a really strong attempt, like take Guild Wars, even where it changes it, it's not so significant, and usually those changes are more almost on the, on the economics of the game. Get in for free for the first 20 levels, then you're going to start paying. Um, I, I think that's the other problem. MMOs are so expensive to make. They are so uncertain to find an audience. They now almost have to be free to play. I think the Bellwether is going to be Elder Scrolls Online, which, you know, there it's a subscription model. Having seen this game slowly move over development, the last time I got to play it, it felt like Elder Scrolls. And I started to wonder if perhaps they might be able to pull off a subscription model because they really are delivering on a game experience that if it isn't entirely different, it kind of delivers on its, on, on its namesake and its heritage. Um, I, I, I think Destiny and those kind of games might be more a sense of where things are going to have to go. I still don't understand how Destiny makes money, and I'm waiting to find... I, I still think there's some secrets about Destiny, that there is some type of pay-as-you-play, or, yes, mm -hmm. mo model that has to be there. $60 for that game is not going to offset what has to be the extravagant cost of making that game. And uh, it, it should be a very interesting year as we start to see and learn more. Um, and when Activision has to kind of lay out what the true business model is for, well, for fi Destiny. Final Fantasy XIV is subscription model also. So. You know, you're right. And I, though, to, to be fair, uh, David, I do not okay. know if Final Fantasy XIV makes money. I, yeah. I, I don't know if, if, if they have enough players and consistent players on a subscription model to offset that. But Square does... Square has been losing a lot of money. Um, yeah. I don't know how much more they can lose. So it, it, I, I, I would be interested to see what they would try to do with the multi, uh, massively multiplayer game. <laughs> Zach, do you want to bring somebody else in? Yeah, let's, uh, let's bring in Gavin here. Gavin, can you uh, unmute yourself? I think you're still muted there, Gavin. Up there at the top, you see the you see the microphone. See the microphone icon. It should be white, and then we can hear you. All right, Gavin, say in just a second. Hold on there, Gavin. Gavin, we're we'll, gonna get uh, back to you. You stay there. Yeah, let's uh, let's bring in Christopher. Christopher, Christopher are you unmuted there. Christopher, unmute yourself. Unmute you. Up there at the top, you know, there's a microphone, or is it? All right, let's bring in someone else. Okay, all right, Steve. Christopher, you keep on working on that. Yes, everyone just pull for both, both <laughs> Gavin and Christopher. <coughs> all right. All right, Steve, can Steve. you unmute yourself at the top there? Yes, so I'm muted. Ah, Steve, we can hear you. Hey. Awesome. <laughs> uh, what's up? Not much. Where are you contacting us from? Uh, I am from uh, London, England right now, um, doing oh, an internship for radio. So, uh, so, so at least we got an American abroad. Yes, close we... it's as close as we can come, hopefully. Where are you living in London? Uh, this place in Muswell Hill, uh, okay. it's a bit north. I, I spent a year and a half of my youth living in London as well. I really, really, really like that city, other than the fact it is the most expensive place I have ever been to. Yeah, yeah, it really, really is. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I'm gravely aware of that now, like five months in. Yeah, start enjoying all those kebabs, because that was like the only thing I could afford to eat at any given time. <laughs> and sausage rolls. Those are and great. And sausage rolls, and sausage rolls. Well, yeah. um, so, okay, 
since I have you here, I'm very interested. Um, an American's perspective of gaming in England. Um, you say it, it kind of outside of the FIFA thing. Do you see similarities in gaming culture? Do you see similarities in gaming interest? Um, other than the fact that this pretty much is FIFA land, it's kind of hard hard to find differences. Like I'm seeing a lot of like basically it's nothing that we would call mainstream in America. I'm seeing a lot of Call of Duties, pretty much anything that wouldn't be geared towards the hardcore because it's basically FIFA dominates the market the market here. Now, if, if, now honestly, as, as popular as FIFA is there, have you been to Italy and looked what gaming culture is like there? It's, <laughs> no, it's a little terrifying the role of FIFA in that, in that country. Uh, uh, so, I mean, was, was was there a lot of excitement and enthusiasm around the console launches? Um, it was. Like, I've been, um, for my internship, I've been interviewing, like, lots of young kids for, like, the website that we're doing, mm -hmm. and it's basically all, like, all the kids want are the new PS4 and uh, FIFA and Call of Duty or, like, something similar to that. And I'm, like, I, like, I try to talk to kids about some sort of, like, you know, out, like a bit more out there games like Journey or something like that, and they wouldn't even know what I was talking about. That's good. It, that, that's, 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 that's very heartwarming. <laughs> it's not. It's not. <laughs> um, so I, 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 I couldn't help but notice you said PS4 and PS4 only. Um, yeah. I mean, is that 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 at least with that, a, a, a younger demographic of gamers, it is Sony and nothing else. Um, I wouldn't say nothing else because they certainly have Xbox. At least they, there's a, a 360 has a big presence here. Um, it's the fact that whenever they're talking about the new generation, I'm not even seeing, I'm barely seeing any PS4 or uh, sorry, excuse me, uh, Xbox One advertisement at all. Now that's what I was about to ask you, and that is fascinating because back here in the states, I have found the the, the PlayStation 4 marketing to be very limited. I mean, I, I, like, I, I, it's, it's, I, I think I'll see ads during football, but in, in San Francisco is not the biggest market, but there hasn't been a sense of billboard or any of that type of advertising, and it sounds like there was quite heavy Sony advertising that was in London. It is, and I'm guessing it really speaks to the fact that, like, what, Sony just sold, like, what, four million in one, in their premiere night year? Like, in really? London, do you know, it, I, no, yeah, it, it was, it's a lot. Million. No, not four million. I'm sorry. Total. I mean, total worldwide now. That's like five percent of the population of England. <laughs> That's a no, little intense. <laughs> but the, the, their totals were really, really high. No, no, they were, they were, they were, they were very, very strong. When once again set against the population of England, it wasn't as big as the American numbers because it's a much bigger country. Yeah. Um, that's that's really interesting. I mean, Zach, we, you and I have talked about this. I mean, have, how much Sony marketing have you seen in the U.S.? So I've actually, I disagree with you a little bit. I feel like I've seen a lot more PS4 ads than I have uh, Xbox One ads in general. Um, yeah, was so it on television or is this... Like, yeah, television marketing? spots. Um, yeah, certainly Microsoft has been hitting a lot of those, those kind of TV and NFL-driven ads during football. Um, but certainly, you know, I watch a lot of basketball, and I, I see, feel like I see a lot more of those greatness awaits uh, commercials than I do Xbox commercials. That's interesting. I, I have not been good about watching uh, basketball this year, so um, this could also be a result of my strange consumption of media. Rather than that. so, I'm, 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 for, for give me everyone, I just pulled the George Will and used anecdotal evidence to make a case. So <laughs> I'm going to pull back from what I just said. <laughs> also, just just to add here, uh, Sony sent out a press release. I believe yesterday, saying that they had sold 2.1 million units uh, worldwide okay. on the PS4. On oh, the PS4, okay, yeah, four. That's just that would be astonishing and wonderful <laughs> if, 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 if that could be pulled off. So, Steve, did you? Um, I, I, I've been once again grilling you about sort of you know an American's eye of gaming in, in England. Did, did you have a question? Oh um, well, I um, I guess my my main question was uh, from Black, some from some of the Black Friday deals that we uh, got in the states. Um, I, I, being pretty poor and couldn't afford any of the next-gen consoles, like, compulsively bought a Vita. Um, ah. And I was waiting to get my own. And I was wondering what your thought is on, like, sort of, not so much the clash between handhelds, but, like, the, um, like, sort of the perpetual nature of the Vita with the PS4 going forward. And what are your hopes to see? Like, is my purchase justified? Do you think that I made a good well, your move at least justified. waiting for a PS4? I think the Vita is a wonderful system. And oh, yeah. please, go play Tearaway. That game is just wonderful. I've been meaning that to. Game. That's the first app that I've been really, wanting to get. It is a, it is just, I love Media Molecule, and I think they knocked this one out of the park. Um, yes. Having said that, uh, I don't know. It's going to be very hard to make a strong case of the Vita 
because people just spent $400 on a PlayStation 4 and they probably want to play games for that. I mean, it's, it, the, the, the Vita is coming down in price. I don't know. I mean, I understand the advantage of remote playing. There's something cool about it, but it's not essential. Um, I'm, I'm still of the mind that, you know, play your games at home, play your mobile games when you're, mo you know, it's, it's, you know, and when you go to the bathroom, think about something. You don't need to be playing a game. You know, read the exactly, paper, yeah. something uh, like that. But, but the Vita is like the perfect toilet, toilet console. <laughs> well, that makes me feel really good about buying a Vita. Yeah, it's, it's like 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 you can be there like like half an hour playing and 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 doing your business like when I finished t ten minutes ago. Um, yeah, yeah. David, the rest of your team is do not buy a second hand Vita. <laughs> <laughs> yes, no, brand new. David, are are you in school? Yeah, I just finished my master's and I'm trying to get into a PhD. Um, what are you studying? Uh, computer science. Uh, well, well, good, but I think you might also have an acumen for marketing. So just just, just bear that in mind. <laughs> Vita is the perfect toilet awake. console. I'm getting some there's, there's something there. There's yeah. a campaign. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, but, yeah. but, but Steve, back to your point, I actually had speculated at one point if the Vita might become a controller for the PlayStation 4. Kind of, you know, they're going to need to probably come up with something more like that. Because obviously would, second screen experience can be handled already by an iPad or an yeah. iPhone. So something that so integrates with the experience and they have a game that really demonstrates that, that, that that'll really push it forward. I, I, I think the Vita, from a just a business standpoint, is going to be challenged because of the new consoles. That, you know, it, it's... You know, they can still sell games to the people who own a Vita, but I think it's going to be very tough to try to sell a Vita when they're also trying to sell this messaging about the PlayStation 4. It, 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 I mean, Sony, Sony's done a fairly good job this year, but let's just say clear, clean messaging is not their strong suit, and they probably know that they need to stay focused on one thing at a time before they just get really kind of jumbled. And it's really unfortunate because a game like Tearaway just got buried. Under everything about the new um, about, about the brand new consoles. Yes, to play tear away, everybody. Just play tear, tear away. <laughs> is actor? Is there anything else there in the chat? Or is yeah, there anyone uh, in there who's playing tear away? Yeah, no, not seeing a whole lot of tear away comments, unfortunately. It's so, uh, but it's so endearing. I know, I know. Um, hopefully, maybe maybe people will get some for the holidays. But uh, we've got a good question here uh, from Dennis B. Uh, I've noticed. Many more games being released in beta or early access. Every day on Steam, more some new game comes out in an unfinished state. Do you see this as a good or bad thing for the industry? I that's a, I also want to also know what you think, Zach. I, I think sometimes it can be good, but there is the risk that those people who get in with the beta might be the extent of your audience, and that how are you going to be able to grow it at the other end of it. Um, but I see also the value that you want to kind of engage the audience. And this is neat when it's happening with smaller indie games and ones that might be experimental. And then say like Peter Molyneux in a game like Goddess, you, you kind of got to do that to see if it works. You know, there's only so much that a kind of a closed beta really can do for you. Um, the one I'm interested in is Destiny. I don't know if that's the best idea. Once again, they need to test it, but I also believe Activision has resources to actually do very strong closed beta tests because when you do a, like a, a beta, and I am air quoting that, for a game like that, it's a demo. And it's just, it, it, hopefully it will be in the very state that they intend to present this game because that will really be the face of the game all the way through and perhaps even past the launch if people have free and easy access to playing it. Um, I think it's a high... I'm trying to think of the last... I mean, even when we would get that for Halo, you know, it can't, they, they, they never presented themselves all that well. Of course, everyone bought Crackdown to get the Halo 3 beta, but it was just... it was Or was it the Halo... Yeah, it was Halo 3. Yeah. What, what, yeah. what do you think, I, I think I think you're describing kind of on on the console side of things. Beta for years now has meant a demo yeah, right. or just yeah. a way to you know maybe for them to test servers a little bit. But on Steam, I think that you're seeing a lot of really interesting stuff. Like um, Vlam Beer's new game, Nuclear Throne, was released in early access back in September, um, and it was actually released at a higher price than what they're going to be selling it for once the game is done. And the idea oh, is like kind that. of yeah, and so the, their justification for that was that, you know, you are paying a premium price 
to be a part of the development process and to kind of go along with them on this journey as they take this game that is, you know, fully functional and, and a lot of fun and they really they flesh it out into a full product. Um, so I, I think there's some fascinating stuff going on there. And another one is uh, Clay who who released their game Don't Starve. Um, yes. Gosh, yes. maybe like a year and a half ago. And you know, it's it, I think that it's it's finally coming out on PS4. It's been out on Steam. Um, but they and that has changed significantly based on fan feedback. Um, so I don't know. I think it's really early to tell. And there's certainly terrible examples of people who release just like unfinished garbage on Steam. Um, that you know, in classify it as beta but or you know early access or something. It's better than Kickstarter because there has to be something of a product there right. for you to then throw money at and help with the development of, rather than promises and pictures of dragons, right? Which is you know what we're getting a lot of on Kickstarter. Yeah. And, and okay. I, I think the other upshot is I think there's something very very useful about getting people a better understanding of what the development process is. You can still great bitch and moan when a game comes out and it doesn't work, but I think it's very, it, it helps to have some insight into how these problems actually can occur. It's such a challenging creative process that's unlike any form of linear media. Yeah, and it, I think your point about the marketing is really interesting. Is it, I think it remains to be seen whether it's better to kind of slowly build up a group of players who can potentially evangelize your product but is that worth the risk of you know showing a game yeah. that might not be all the way there and turning people off never to come back? Also, I think there's data that has never the, the, there's, there's data out there that demonstrates that there really is no strong correlation between availability of a demo and sales. Hmm. Unless it's a big, I think if there's a big chunk of game and you really get somebody into it, then you can see a pretty good conversion rate. But a lot of the stuff that's happening in the kind of the middle era of the Xbox 360 was not working in the favor of a lot of publishers. In fact, I think I started to go under the impression that if it has a demo, it must be bad. <laughs> <It's> all... <laughs> all right, let's 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 bring somebody else in, Zach. Yeah, should we try uh, try Gavin again? Yeah, Gavin. Gavin, you ready? You guys working now? There we go. There we, we go. go. Cool, Gavin. Where are you hailing from? Um, I am from Tampa, Florida, so I'm not one of your international people that you're looking for. Well, it looks like we're, we're we pretty much have David. And Steve, of course, I, Steve I is still bad, in North America, hence within this time zone. Steve is an American who's in a different time zone, <laughs> so we are definitely <laughs> squeezing this one. Anyway, um, so how how is Tampa? How is gaming in Tampa these days? How is gaming in Tampa? Uh, yeah, you know, it's how it is every other area I'm in the U.S. Nothing really going on here. It's just it's really hot outside for it being winter. That's about um, it. Like, like, like how hot? Uh, I think today the high was like 87 or something. Wow. Okay, it just got. It's been really warm here in San Francisco, except today it just got stupid cold. Like, <laughs> I need to move back to LA cold. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, so, uh, what's 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 on your mind? Did you get yourself a new console? Uh, no, I didn't. I actually went the route that I'm seeing a lot of people go recently, which is going the PC instead of getting a new console. So did you upgrade your PC, or did you just start to just get more uh, games for your PC? Yeah, I've been a Microsoft gamer for since original Xbox. I had Xbox Live back in the Halo 2 days, and uh, I just finally decided to take the jump to PC. Well, I mean, I at least for the next year, I don't see how doing that could be a bad idea. Uh, I mean, even a game like Titanfall is coming to the PC. You yeah, know, exactly. so I, I think of the games I know that are console, the only one that I know that I, that I would feel like I was missing out on would be a game like Infamous, Second Son, on the PlayStation 4. And a lot of things um, I noticed was, uh, I don't think other people really noticed, but Black Friday sales this year for gaming PCs were really, really good. That's why I actually decided huh. to go for it. I don't know if that's because the next-gen consoles, or, but yeah, I don't have any kind of hatred to like Microsoft or anything. So, uh, and, and you're not, yeah, it, it sounds like you're slow to adopt the attitude of the PC master race people either. <laughs> you, yeah. seem, you seem to be a very yeah. genuine, kind guy. Um, so, so, did you buy just an all-in-one computer, or did you build something up yourself? Oh, uh, well, I went to uh, Newegg and got all the different parts, and I think they're all going to be here around Friday or something, and I'll just go ahead and put that together. H have you ever built a PC on your own? No, I have not, but... Uh... It's, it's I, fun. I, some, I, I yeah. just did it myself about three years ago. Um, a, a very, very good buddy of mine who uh, at the time was working at Hewlett Packard did another uh, very good friend of mine who actually I met through this process uh, who, who, who was at EA 
were on Skype giving me instructions about how to build this PC. <laughs> and when it came to when it came to putting the CPU into the motherboard, that was a moment of just absolute terror. <laughs> And, you know, I was trying to use my wife because her hands are a lot smaller than mine to do these delicate maneuvers because, you know, I was being told if I did anything wrong, like <laughs> flames would emerge and, 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 and de demons would, 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 would somehow come out of it. But at the same time, I had a much better understanding of what a PC is at the conclusion of that. And it's right. really, there's an undeniable sense of satisfaction when you boot it up and it works. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I, I, the, the other thing I love to do when I do, like, a big upgrade on a PC is go find that game that was kind of chugging and just boot it up. It just feels like you won. Like you dominated them because now you're just cranking up all the bells and whistles and it's running really smoothly. So I'm, I'm, I'm very juvenile that way and develop personal animus to games that don't perform perfectly. I guess that's why I'm a critic. <laughs> you show Crisis, Adam. Yeah. Actually, that was what well, the key was was Crisis. And the other one was Witcher 2, except still, mm. I thought I finally could select the Uber sampling on Witcher 2. Could not do it. For the Actually, no, I, I got it up to like probably 20 frames a second, so it was playable, but it looked it incredible. Just but I, it, just, it just would not. It just said, no, I give up. So, <laughs> well, um, Gavin, I, I, I do wish you the best of luck. Keep your mic open. Jump in the, the, the fray. Do you want to see if we can get uh, Christopher? Yes, Christopher. Uh, Christopher, are you ready? Ready to unmute? Unmute yourself. Uh-oh. There you go. We got gotcha. you. I think. No, we didn't. Yes. Did he? We we're hearing you, Chris, first. Check the headset's mute. Might be a little switch on the headset. You there? Headset. Say some words. Pull for Christopher. No, we're not hearing you. Oh. Oh, Christopher, we're going to... All right. Sign language. We'll find your new headphones. Find your iPad headphones. <laughs> it's all, it's uh, Adam, we've got a couple good questions in the chat here. Oh, uh, maybe yeah, we'll Christopher tries to sort that out. Um, good question from uh, Michael Kirshner. Uh, last generation's theme was the standardization of HD and online multiplayer. What do you think will be the theme of this generation when we look back on it? Um, it's from, from at the beginning of this generation. It's probably going to be something involving the cloud, although with maybe the exception of what was happening with the AI in Forza, I'm not seeing a very good demonstration of that. Um, perhaps it'll be storage of games. Something will probably move in that direction. Um, if this questionable promise that suddenly all this processing can be done in the cloud and we're going to start to look at our consoles, more is just kind of a doorway to get to play the game, um, that might be what the discussion is. Um, I, I, I think the other, it, it, it might be indie games or at least highly experimental games, since you know, there seems to be honest efforts on the part of both Microsoft and Sony to try to nurture a little bit more of a sense of variety. You know, while, while we went HD and games became so expensive last generation, a lot of games became very same-like, and, and hopefully we might see something that is more than just sort of the same old, same old. Um, what, what, what do you think, Zach? Um, I don't know. I think based on the launch, which is always a terrible way to judge these things by, uh, maybe second screen. Um, you know, it seems like almost every big AAA game has some sort of second screen support. Yes, uh, I have yeah, yeah, yet to find the second screen support. I'm like, that's great. I mean, it's, 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 still, it's always predicated on very strange assumptions of human behavior. Who is at the airport and feels like doing commander mode in Battlefield 4? And if you're at home, wouldn't you rather be actually playing Battlefield 4 the way it's enjoyable, which is like shooting people? I just, I, it, just it seems so... And then also I was complaining to Zach yesterday that I downloaded the PS4 or the PlayStation app on my iPad, and apparently it only really is designed for the phone, and it's, and it's ugly. It's just... Everyone seems to be really confused. It's kind of like a high school dance right now with second screen. Everyone just has their back up against the wall waiting for someone else to do something. And right. it, it, I, but once again, I think there's a lot of potential there. Just someone needs to design the game with that in mind from the get-go. You can kind of feel that someone made a phone call to the dev team and said, hey, we, we want a second screen on that. Yeah, uh, well, but perhaps a, a dark answer to that question is a segue into this question from uh, Jen P. Uh, <laughs> who says, this is Jen from Canada, I'm wondering what you think of microtransactions. I'm worried about the cost, but on the other side, my parents complain about how often they get stuck in games. Maybe this is a way to get through difficult spots. I'm so scared of the second half of that. Because if we start to create challenge in the game that is designed to encourage the microtransaction, 
we are going to completely screw up game design. That is, I, I am, I, as, as I said before, I didn't have a huge problem with Forza because it's a, just a very different type of game. And hey, if you really want to just drive one of the very high-end ones and you don't want to bother with kind of working your way up and earning the money, go right ahead. But when you start to see it in Rise, Rise is a very strange example of this because you don't need it. I mean, really, the, 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 the game is conceptually so rudimentary that it's like hit button when it tells you to hit the button, you know, or when you think you're supposed to hit the button. Um, that why, why you would actually accelerate the entire core of the game, which is the gameplay, is kind of bizarre to me. Um, I think there's enough of a concern about it that it's going to check Microsoft. I, I, I think that these elements of both Forza and Rise were there for a while, and that that was going to be too hard for them to back out of. We now know that Microsoft is running sensitive. They're very aware of what people are saying. They actually change their policies. I think that they might go a little bit back to the drawing board on how they want to integrate microtransactions in games. Microtransactions make the most sense in online, especially if it's superficial. Um, it's 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 it, it's it's going to stay. It's going to be essential. They have to find new ways to make money on these games. But to do it at the expense of good game design is something that is a is a possibility and is quite concerning to me. Yeah. Well, the problem with Forza Five was that that like the really good cars like took like more than a hundred hours of gameplay to in order to which, unlock. Which so. car is that? I mean, I, I know the Austin Martin was ridiculous, and then some of the Formula One cars. Yeah. Were so some of those expensive. Like but, if you. If, if you wanted to play for get it for free, you'd like like to play for for like a year. Well, I, I I I guess the thing is, I know people are saying that, but I, you can earn money so fast. And in in addition, that driver tar, when you're not playing the game, is earning a fair amount of money. That I, I I think, I don't think the system is that challenging. To, but to to be fair, I did not in the course of my review, you know, even get close to pulling off the Aston Martin or the or the Formula One cars, but I, I it's something I, I, during my break, I'm going to go back and play a lot more Forza. It's something I am interested in, but I think there might be an assumption of evil where really that was not the intent. Um, I, but I, I, I do know it was easier to get to a certain class of cars in previous Forzas. So, and um, Turn Ten has said that they are uh, readjusting the economy in kind of in, in the wake of I, 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 I think they may have also once again Microsoft likes to respond to complaints. <laughs> I think they may have put a little bit too much faith on the driver cars bringing in cash because one of the one of the issues is your driver car isn't always driving. It has to kind of meet the criteria of the races people want to race, and it did it did sound like that you were going to do better if you were say like right there in the middle rather than an incredibly bad driver or an incredibly good driver. So yeah. that, that that it's 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 an interesting system. I'm glad that they're addressing it because I think right now to look like you are. Trying to you know get more cash out of the sixty dollar purchase, which also came with a five hundred dollar purchase, is a little craven and uh, really really crass. Yeah, so. one one more quick question uh, as we talk about dark themes before we bring someone else in. Uh, this is from Chris Nixon. He asks, "How do you think game companies can justify the price differences in digital content in other countries?" And I think also you know. If you're offering a game uh, digitally day one, how are you justifying the price being the same as if you're walking into a retail store and buying that? I don't think you can. <laughs> it's really... Um, I live here, you can't. You know, that brings up a question I had never considered. Um, and, hey, hey David, do, yeah, yeah. Are, are, are there tariffs on American imports going into Mexico? Yes. There yeah. are? Yeah. Uh, so, some things are... Yeah, I mean, obviously it, it can be by, by, by a certain type of product, but also yeah. kind of going back to what we were talking about well, with, the, with, with, with how much like, a console is in, um, in Brazil, if you're buying digitally, does that get the same tax markup because I, I it's not physically being imported? Uh, I, 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 there is no tax for digital things right, right now. Yeah, it's... it's in Mexico, that, and... That and I abuse that because I buy a lot of games digitally because mm -hmm. they are cheaper cheaper buying in the store in, like on, the, on PSN. Mm -hmm. They are che cheaper, but the dollar conversion like makes it cheaper if you go uh -huh. to a store and, and buy them. Like, like if you go to a store, they're like 
at least ten dollars more expensive. Okay, but that but that, but that, that's more of a currency exchange, not sort of a deliberate decision on the part of the yeah. But, uh, but, uh, but yeah. when they bring the the physical copy, it, it comes with 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 a certain tax, a new tax, and on the on the digital uh, end. You yeah. you don't pay for that tax, so it's cheaper to buy digital. At least uh, here. although even that may be that that's probably going to be changing in the United States as well. I know that California, New York have finally you know beaten Amazon down. <laughs> you have to pay taxes on your deliveries. Um, the the I, I, I what I think is going to happen with the cost is and it makes the most sense from a business standpoint. They're going to increase the cost of the games in the store. And it'll be sixty dollars for the game to be bought digitally. I do not see them actually dropping the price below sixty dollars. Once again, they're gonna need to make money on this, and they've got to find where that profit's going to be. I'm not saying it's a good thing. I just think it's inevitability. It's it's. But at the same time, I'm really a big fan of buying things digitally if they can figure out better storage and faster download speeds. If you know you can store all your stuff in the cloud. I, it, it sounds better. It's more environmentally thoughtful. I, as, as I did in one of my more famous Sessler somethings earlier this year, I'm just not a fan of the fetishization of possessing things. It just, it's just, it's, 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 it's I'm, I'm, I've been working this year to try to distance myself from that and trying to wear shoes until they're absolutely worthless. And I, I haven't succeeded on the shoes, actually, whatsoever. Well, what if they okay. can be shipped by drones? Okay, okay. Let, let's talk about this shipped by drones thing. <laughs> Can, does, 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 the, does the media not understand what they just did? For 48 hours, they gave Amazon the best advertising ever. It's such bullshit. Delivery by up your... My God, how does anybody take that seriously for a second? My God, we barely deliver bombs well by drones. We keep on killing <laughs> civilians. Where the hell are these packages going to go? It's just so stupid. And Oh, God. Ah, ah, there. Got that out. Oh. Thank you. All right. Steve. Sorry. Sorry. I, I, I needed to get that off my chest, Steve. Thank you so much. Oh, there we go. All right. <laughs> All right. Let's bring somebody in, Zach. All right. Also be your drone uh, operator. <laughs> uh, Vinicus, uh, unmute yourself, sir. Click the little microphone icon at the top there. Okay. Just did it. Is it working? Yeah. Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah. Where are you hailing from? I'm from Brazil. Oh, wow. There you are. Yeah, the you, expensive thank you for joining PlayStation. <laughs> okay, no, so uh, thank you. What, now, what exactly is the cost of an Xbox One or a PlayStation 4 in Brazil? Xbox One is about $1,000. It's mm -hmm. $2,200. Uh -huh. And the PlayStation 4 is $4,000, which is about $2,000. Wow. And it's... Now, yeah, now, it makes it makes absolutely no sense. Now, you know, we, we we were just discussing, so now I can actually get a straight answer. How much of that cost is the import charge, uh, the, the 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 tariff, and how much of that is because obviously the 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 value of the Brazilian currency is becoming something of an issue. I know in in your country. Well, it's it's unclear. Uh, Sony has issued a, a statement, but it's. I, I, it's not really believable because if you, if I can if I buy a PlayStation 4 from uh, uh, Amazon I don't know and import it even if I pay taxes I'll pay a, at most a thousand dollars so there's an extra thousand dollars that I have no idea where it comes from hmm. I, I don't know it if, if it's I mean, I, I, I've, I've heard Sony. stories that if they could get some manufacturing of the consoles into Brazil it would bring down the price considerably. Yeah, I think Xbox is partially made here, and the PlayStation 3 is made here. It's not so cheap. It's not as cheap as it should be, but it's a lot cheaper than it's than the PS4, obviously. And well, I I don't know. It seems they're working on it, but I have no idea if it's gonna work. And I I don't plan on buying a PS4 here in Brazil. I'll well, I was about to, to say. Who is buying it? I mean, is it just the people that Max Payne was protecting at the beginning of the game? I mean, it sounds like it's like gaming, at least on, on new consoles, is solely for a very, very elite and wealthy class in Brazil. Yeah, it's it is. It's there is a lot of inequality here, so it's really only a very privileged part of the the population that can that can buy it. 
but I think most people you probably wait until like PS5 to buy to actually buy a PS4. And I, I'm a friend of mine who is not he's not even he's quite privileged, and he just bought a, a PlayStation 3 recently, mm. and it's. That's a, that's a very. I mean, I, I I hope it doesn't have to take a PlayStation Five to, to to fix this. I mean, everything I read also is that Latin America and Brazil in particular, because of the size of the population there, is very very interesting. And that's really the market that video games have to grow into. Because it, it's got to be an expanding market, and, and like, really, it's all there. And it looks like resolution to that will be get manufacturing, both in Brazil, maybe in Argentina, in other parts of the country, so you can bring down like the, the, the import costs and obviously not get hit with, uh, I think, some, some very high tax rates because it's, it's coming from, from outside of the country. Yeah, it's, it's, I think I'm optimistic, actually, because uh, it's a lot better with uh, the PlayStation 3 than with, it was with PlayStation 2, for example. It's, it's a lot... Easier, but, it's cheaper. But PC gaming is very big in Brazil. I mean, it almost seems by default yes, you're going to have yeah, that much that, cost. It's all on the PC. Yeah, that that's something I don't understand. It's taxes. I don't know it's laws and whatnot. Uh, that it seems like PC and PC games they fall under a different category than than console games for some reason, and so they they there are less taxes mm -hmm. on them. That's Everybody, what I heard. I haven't. Every, every Brazilian I know plays on the PC. I've, I've, I've met many people during my time in uh, in Los Angeles because of a certain friend. And yeah, I mean, their gaming culture was all complete PC gaming. Not always the most legal PC gaming. <laughs> but I think there's a, yeah, actually, I think it's actually, another culture that's in Brazil as well when it comes to, comes to certain games. <laughs> yeah, it's. I think it's actually getting more legal here because Steam now has. Uh, prices in Brazilian currency and they are actually quite good they are f pretty fair prices they're usually cheaper even than buying in, in dollars there's it, uh, the, the role of piracy in affecting both content and um, in, in, in cost is, is very fascinating it's almost become an integral aspect of kind of the economics of a lot of entertainment culture not just games but, but movies and stuff like that yeah. as well um, hey Zach let's see if we can get one more guy in before our hour is up But, oh, Zach, I think you've muted yourself. Oh. Well, the tables have turned. Oh, no, you've lost the moral authority, Zach. Oh, oh the no. same table. <laughs> Alex, are you there? Yes. Yeah. Can you hear me? Yes, got it. Alex, where are you from? Um, I'm in Manchester in the UK oh. at the moment. Yay. So we have an American in the UK and... The UK in the UK. The <laughs> UK in the UK, yes. I'll leave soon, I promise. Don't worry. <laughs> Um, so how were how were the console launches in Manchester? I mean, the, the the PlayStation 4 just came out. Well, I mean, it's strange because you were talking about advertising earlier. I've seen absolutely no PS4 advertising in Manchester anyway, and I've yeah. not heard about it anywhere else. Um, and Manchester, but, if I'm right, that's the third most populous city. It's it's London, Birmingham, um, Manchester. I, it's somewhere around there. Okay. Yeah, it's um, certainly the biggest urban area. Mm. Um, outside of Greater London, mm. and but I have seen a gigantic Xbox One uh, advertisement like all over because at the moment we've got the Christmas markets which a lot of people come to Manchester for, and Microsoft have obviously seen that and they've taken that um, for marketing and there's been absolutely no PS4 marketing, but I don't know of anyone who's buying an Xbox One at all. It doesn't seem very popular. Not as popular as the PS4, anyway. Do you think it's even less popular than the Xbox 360 was? Um, no, I think the Xbox 360 is is huge in this country. Um, okay. I think. So, so probably, it sounds like there's a huge shift in 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 in, in Yes, in yes, okay. definitely. And I think I think the main thing that comes down to is the price, because obviously the Xbox One is 429 pounds. Okay. And the PS4 is 350 and for a lot of parents, uh, especially around Christmas time, this country obviously economically is not, you know, yeah. functioning too well. So the PS4 is automatically the more attractive option out of the two. And well, I think also, people just, think that in, they get more. In American currency, that's closer to six to seven hundred dollars. Yes, yes, I think, yeah. 
So yeah. either one you're getting is considerably more expensive. Oh yes, yes, definitely. Yeah. yeah, and um, and so I know of a, a fair few people who are getting the PS4 for Christmas. Uh, I am too, but it's funny because my little brother is getting a gaming PC for Christmas. Huh. So huh. there's some <laughs> disparity in the, I mean, in the I, family. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's very interesting. I mean, that despite the cost for either one, but I think it really, you know, those sales figures of the PlayStation 4 become all the more impressive when you really understand how much more this console seems to be anywhere but the United States of America. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's that's a pretty hefty level of enthusiasm. Other than cost, I mean, are you seeing any type of brand loyalty? As, 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 as you probably know, Alex, um, the, the world, the, the, the internet world that I get to communicate with acts like everyone's like somehow, I, 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 I don't know, some, somehow in lockstep and getting money from a various corporation oh, yeah. or enthusiasm for, for <laughs> yeah. especially Sony. I mean, are, are, are you seeing like that kind of excitement or is it more a pragmatic, I'm really going to enjoy my PlayStation 4, also it's $100 cheaper? Um, I think, I, um, obviously, the Xbox 360 dominated um, this generation, especially in the UK. And um, all of my friends have 360s, but all of my friends that are buying next generation consoles are buying the PS4. And I, I think um, there's that. It's a seismic shift, especially in this country, considering you know how big FIFA is. I don't personally pay FIFA, but it seems like it, it's huge. All of my friends play it. So I don't think brand loyalty is as much of a thing as I think the internet has made it out to be. Because obviously, ever since the, the reveal of both consoles, it does seem like uh, everyone has their loyal console and they will take down anyone in flames yeah, yeah. who tries to disagree <laughs> with them. And I think it's more, I definitely think it's more of a pragmatic, it's a lot cheaper. Um, when, when it comes to parents, they're looking to buy something cheaper for. You know, that, that, also, that I, would, I would say the FIFA effect is, if my friend has FIFA, I want to play with my friend, yeah. I better get the same console as him. Yeah, definitely. So all it took was it being cheaper, yeah. enough people, FIFA, 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 kind of, it, it just yeah, kind of lost. Yeah, definitely, it. yeah. Well, that's, um, that, you know, that's, that's very interesting and very insightful. See, Internet, pragmatism. Pragmatism. That's a, <laughs> that's a, that's a, that's a wonderful way to make decisions. It really is, because you're making informed decisions. Um, Zach, do you want to throw one more question from the chat before we uh, head on out for the hour? Yeah, let's see here. Um, so David Matthews uh, asks, what do you think about the future of the week? Uh, yes, native <laughs> musician David Matthews is in the chat here. Um, is he playing a hits. show in Boulder, Colorado? Anyway. <laughs> yeah, um, more Dave Matthews jokes. Uh, what do you think about the future of the Wii U? Uh, is it going to see any success now that we're seeing some big titles like Super Mario uh, coming out? Okay, I think something will happen, um, not because of what I've seen with the Wii U, but what I've seen with the 3DS. I just bought myself a 3DS XL because I really wanted to play Zelda. I was very happy to also have Donkey Kong. I was really happy that I'm also going to be able to have like Mario and Luigi Super... Wait, that was the other one. Anyway, the Mario and Luigi um, role-playing game. Dream. Of course, you know, the... the Dream uh, Team. Uh, Dream Team. Dream Team, thank you. And the Mario and Luigi... Uh, the, the, the Mario game from about a year or two ago. Okay, that, it looks like it takes two years for Microsoft to figure... I mean, sorry, for, for Nintendo to figure out what they're doing. Here's my concern. In theory, I love the new Mario game that's on the Wii U. I find it incredibly hard to play with any of the controllers, especially the Wiimote and, and, and that, that, that tablet as well. All I want to do is have a wave bird in my hands and play that game because I can look at the level design of that game, and it is brilliant and wonderful. There just seems to be almost like there's, there's, this, there's something in between me and the game that mainly is that Wii U tablet that just is not designed in kind of a logical way, at least for, for my hands, to actually deal with some of the you know fun and remarkable challenges that the game presents. Um, also, the way in which the tablet is integrated into the game, once again, doesn't make a case for the tablet. If you go back to Super Mario Galaxy, which is easily one of the best games I've played in the past 10 years, everything about the Wiimote and Nunchuck together made sense. It was that aha moment. I get it. I get what they're doing, and the game played gorgeously. We have yet to really see that game that does that for the Wii U tablet that can kind of shift the thinking, not just inside of Nintendo, but hopefully for some other third-party developers about where that 
that, that, that controller excels. I think that's my biggest concern that we're not going to see kind of the two-year effect with the Wii U where we start to see the really fun and interesting software. So um, I, I, I really, I, I, I want Nintendo and I want more Mario games and I want more Zelda games and I want a new IP from them as well. But uh, I, I think they have a really serious challenge ahead of them. So Yeah, and you know, the, the success of the 3DS has had almost nothing to do with the 3D factor yeah. of the 3DS, right? Although the way it is integrated into Zelda is kind of cool. Because you, 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 you get that sense of height. Granted, it's, once again, it's not essential, but it was, it was kind of like, okay, that's cool, and now it seems to work better on the XL. So my eyes aren't going like, like that every time. But yeah, no, you're absolutely right. The 3D is yet again not an essential component to any of the really, really good games that are on that wonderful little handheld. All right, guys, that is it for this special international edition of Address the Cess. We're going to do Address the Cess for the next two weeks before I head out on a long vacation involving tears and living in a cave. Um, hey. So next week, we will be doing it on Wednesday again, but we'll be doing it at the normal time, which is uh, 4 p.m. Pacific, 7 p.m. Eastern. I have no idea what that is, Greenwich Mean Time, and forgive me, I can't do the math that fast. We'll be doing probably the same the following week, and that will be the week of the 16th. Um, so please join us for those uh, moments. It should be a lot of fun as we round out the year. Um, also, everyone, obviously you guys are cool, loyal viewers. We're about 1,300 subscribers from hitting a goal of 400,000 on YouTube. So go bother some of your friends and tell them to hit that. Because when we hit a big round number, we get a clean glass of water here. And we would really, really, really appreciate one. <laughs> All right, guys. So uh, there should be a lot of fun um, best of the year content coming out in the next few days. We'll have a Gran Turismo 6 review that will be going up on Friday. Uh, once again, join us for Address Assess next week. Really love this conversation. Everyone take care. Bye. <laughs>